for some, Scandia Life Cows Week means much more than racing and parties. This is their story. the longest serving coastal officer in the country. He's a familiar face to everyone, but not for much longer. Good morning to you. I haven't forgotten those papers for you. And a happy recording to you. Thank you very much indeed, Ian. I'll, I'll tip the lid, I'll try and do those papers tonight. After 28 enjoyable years, he has just seven days left in the force. Good morning, how are you, David? All right. It's an important week too on board Class 1 yacht, Independent Bear. As the overall winners last year, the crew have a lot to live up to, but skipper Kit Hobday has full faith in them. Over six of them have been sailing with me for five years, and all of them sailed at least two or three seasons. And we all stick fairly close to together, we flop around the world together. I'm very, very fond of them all. I mean, I'm seriously fond of them all. And yeah, we have our rows like families have rows. But I mean, if anybody else gets in and starts criticising being unpleasant, the whole thing changes immediately. One of the crew is family, Kit's wife Susie, who likes to look good while she's winning. It's a bit difficult to look glamorous when you're out there. Is there any person, mind you, I know who sells a sapphire? Yes, and a lipstick in my pocket. Always a lipstick. Appearances are also on Sue Hardwick's mind. Guest appearances. She's in charge of public relations and has a list of VIPs to look after, as well as the unenviable job of keeping 300 journalists happy. Today's task is more taxing than usual. Shortly, Prince Philip will be in town. We'll have the press boats go out at 10, come back at 11.30, so it all ties in perfectly. But he's not going to be sailing on her. And the idea is if you want to go and do some filming and take a camera crew on robotic and do some filming of her sailing, that makes a nice backdrop to pictures of him on the boat the only thing we've got to get clearance from is um, the Lord Lieutenant to make sure that we're not going to go in the size 12s and uh, because it's delicate, because it's the Royals, we need to clear it. The Prince, of course, brings his own security staff. Good news for John, who's already tied up in detective work. When we came on, there was a rigid inflatable moored up alongside the boat with a note from the uh, night crew who went off at five this morning. Uh, it was found drifting over at Cow Shop uh, about four o'clock. They brought it back here, it obviously come from cows. Well, unfortunately, we recognised it. Um, it's belonging to a member of the Cows Corinthian Yacht Club, so we've taken it back down there, we got rid of it off our borough. And as soon as people start moving down there in a minute, we'll go in and make a few inquiries, see um, what the score is behind it. Uh, may have been stolen during the night, might have just drifted away, so hopefully we can get that sorted out in the next hour or so. On board Independent Bear, everyone's in high spirits as they head for the start line. The yacht's finished a disappointing third and fifth in its first two races, but the crew are confident of turning things around. But today, the smiles won't last long. They're about to be third time unlucky. Meanwhile, the search for the owner of the rigid inflatable has hit a new, rather puzzling problem. Well, there's no sign of the boat we brought back. Um, the bosun's not down here, so not much we can do at the moment. Not much we can do, is there, Bill? Independent Bear's support boat is back already. The yacht can't possibly win the race when its spinnaker's been left on the shore. Uh, you didn't see the go into that rib that was in here just now, did you? I don't know, that's why we brought it down this morning, so it was, they found it over at Cow Shop up past four this morning. Oh well, I just, I just wondered, you know, if where it had gone from and... Yeah, oh well. Oh well. <laughs> he doesn't know it was stolen then. <laughs> Only 15 minutes to go before the gum, but the first race is to get back to Independent Bear in time. Someone forgot to stow the spinnaker the night before, but no one's naming names. Go for it. Zero, zero, three. Yeah. At least Sue's day is running smoothly so far. 
Prince Philip will visit the historic Russian boat Botic. It's in place, almost everything's ready. Where are you? Are you with him? As long as the crew haven't lost him, because if we lose that, we lose the bit for the video news release tonight. I'm just concerned about a camera crew who are doing the, the royal um, um, visit now, and they need to be in the right place at the right time. So um, they got off at the prospect, and they're now supposed to be walking down the high street. So I'm just a little concerned that everything will come together, and they'll then get the botic, which is the important element of it. But we're all right. <laughs> I'm not going to lose my cool or my rag yet. Give us off, Where are you going? What's the first stop? We're off Yarmouth. Off Yarmouth. The case of the missing rib remains unsolved. So it's time for John to get his head together with PC Bill Bates. The pair have known each other for years, but the partnership will soon be over. Very skillful, very knowledgeable about everything to do, you know, with the sea and boats. So I think it's, it's just sunk in this week that, uh, you know, one day he's working on the launch, the next day for the rest of his life he isn't. Um, and that, you know, although perhaps you look forward to retirement, that does come as a bit of a shock, really. It, it'll definitely be different not to have him about every day. OK, well... All of a sudden, Prince Philip's visit is the least of Sue's worries. Okay. Bad weather is on the way. All right. OK, well, come back to me and let me know if there's any change. Thanks. Bye. On board Independent Bear, they've already noticed. They're doing well in second place, but rather than a pleasant day sailing, it's a tough and tiring race. And just when you think things can't get any worse... The broken boom puts paid to their hopes today and may end their week. Four seven winds are ripping the fleet apart. By the end of the afternoon, 12 boats will lose their masts, one will sink, countless sails will be torn to shreds. But even the stormiest clouds have a silver lining. A few bits left of the spinnaker. Um, I don't know, it needs to be laid out and let's have a look. Um, OK, well, can you take it outside? Yeah. What, what name of the boat? Spellbinder. The sailmakers don't delight in the yachtsman's misery, but there's no denying bad weather makes them money. They earn it, though. Everyone wants to race the next day, so it will be a late night tonight. The sewing machines are switched into overdrive. Yeah. These shreds here formed a spinnaker once. Chris is just going to come and look at this yeah, okay. and give you an estimate of what we can do with it. Um, it looks like it could just be the seam that's blown, actually. Where's the bag that you've got in? Yeah, it's over there. No, maybe not. Uh, pretty much, yeah. If, uh, if you want to get rid of a lot of money very quickly, take up sailing. Well, I've seen worse. <laughs> True. 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 Oh, True. Oh. Prince Philip has arrived to inspect the Russian boat, and Sue can relax for a while. Fortunately, her camera crew has also turned up on time. His Royal Highness seems suitably impressed, and there should be plenty of positive publicity. That went extremely smoothly, all according to plan, albeit 20 minutes late. Okay. Out on the water, the real story of the day continues to unfold. Reports are coming through of two men overboard, and the police rush to join the search. Can you give me the location of the cabin? Uh, um, half mile uh, north of the east point. Could you give me a description of the cabin, David? Most of the mills is 24, and um, it's a 24-foot white sailing boat. Over. Could be this one just here. Hey. Are you all okay? 
OK. Yeah, stays up here, let's get out. Yeah, there's a bit of pan broadcast about you, that's all. But you're all OK. Are you carrying on racing? Stay You've retired. OK. They've recovered both their crew members. They're OK, they've retired from the race. And they're making their way back into cave. So um, nothing else required on that one. Uh, fortunately, we were in the area at the time. The independent bear crew are safely back on dry land, but their work is far from over. The ingenuity of the yacht's designer, John Corby, is about to be put to the test at the end of an already trying day. I mean, we've still got a good place. We're able to finish sort of with the sails cracking and stuff. Uh, main concern is to get this fixed tonight and go racing tomorrow. It's not impossible. You can do anything with glue and carbon fibre. But can you do it in just 16 hours? They'll have to find a way if they'd have any chance of retaining their Class 1 title. It's going to be a long and nerve-wracking night. This is not a sight the owners of Independent Bear had expected to see at Cow's Week. The yacht out of the water while urgent repairs are required to her boom. Yeah, put it through this window. Right. The work can only be carried out a few miles away, too far to walk. The team spirit, which has been so evident in the past on the water, is now needed on the shore. We're going to have to do this with Craig, though, because some... Yeah, we'll go through. We'll go through there. Uh, uh, in from the stern. Uh, don't worry, we will. I don't think this is a very good idea, actually. It's not clear what the police would make of this unusual method of transport. Right, got it. Luckily, John Banks is occupied elsewhere. At last, he's found the rib, already reunited with its owner. The security guard over at the activity centre at Carshot, there was um, some people there with a, a speedboat were bringing the boat ashore, oh, about four o'clock in the morning. He thought it was a little bit suspicious, so took their... Um, vehicle number and then your dinghy was seen sort of drifting in the vicinity whether it just drifted across there because we had a sort of say westerly wind it possible whether somebody used it and just dumped it over on the over cow shot way we just don't know I think there's quite a bit of that in the yeah well we had another one last last night um from down at Suters yeah. uh they used it to get up to the pontoon just off here uh you know that we, we get a lot of that but to actually get one right over a car shot, it's a little bit... Well, oh, it would have been nice. I would have thought it would have taken it either west or east rather than straight across. Yeah. How would the engine not been running properly since? Oh. So... Main thing is you've got, you've got it back um, very, very quickly. So, uh, you know, if we do get anywhere with it, we might want to have a statement from you later. But if, unless we get something a bit more positive, uh, we're wasting everyone's time. Pete, are you where it's sticking out a bit on your side? In the press office, the tension is rising. The strong winds have brought five head injuries, three broken arms and a dislocated elbow. The media attention has shown a remarkable increase. There is clearly a lot of interest in what's been happening out on the water. The racing's been good, it's been positive, but there is uh, quite a lot to write about, not just who's won, but also to look into what's actually happened in terms of the um, adverse weather conditions that when the wind blew up to sort of gusting 4-7 this afternoon, um, some of the smaller boats sadly lost their masts. So, as you can see, there's quite a lot of busy activity going on with everybody also trying to meet deadlines of finding their stories. So, this is our most frenetic time at the moment. <laughs> They the it's time to get the facts straight. Sue has to brief her assistant Sabina for a live television interview about the day's events. And get the boats in the right direction. So I they mean, only reverse the course of the smaller day boats, yes. which would 
Which are the maximize ones that are the most the yes, right, and okay, they were the ones fine. that are most vulnerable. And we had the red Sigma. Sigma 38 red coat was just mastered. Okay. And then Victory was, um, we had three, yes, Victory called Puffin. Fine. Okay, and that's damage. fine. I nearly always think pays we can get at least one day when it blows fairly hard. Um, a few years ago, it blew, oh, I'd say, say West 4 6, I suppose. Um, we actually had two fatalities in the Solent that day. The crew of Independent Bear are about to find out if their boom can be fixed. Designer John Corby has called on his contacts. The one good thing about Corby, if he says something's going to get done, it does. As long as it's nothing to do with electronics. If it's anything to do with electronics, it's a nightmare. I, I said to him, I said, why isn't our radio working? He said, I don't think the aero's working. I said, well, have you got somebody to look at it? Uh, no. Any electronics, is, and our instruments don't work properly, is a disaster. Anything physical, with hands on, absolutely great. Just, just, I don't care what the hell it looks like, but as long as it's in one piece again, Steve, you can do it, you can do anything. Most of the boats are back now, the sailors still smiling. It was quite bouncy out there. Yeah. Good fun, good fun, good fun. Lots of water in, lots of pumping. Heavy, de heavy degree of masochism involved in this. In the sailmaker's loft, they have 63 repairs to get through. That's a lot of stitching for manager Barry Watkin. I guess uh, Cowsweet's made up of a lot of people. Some have done it before, some haven't. And some will know an awful lot about it more than they did when they started. Uh, <laughs> in here, we've been repairing them ever since. I guess they've been coming in from about midday onwards. Um, just about everything, from the little sports boats up to the 12 metre. Uh, the wind can catch out even the most experienced of guys. They're racing, they're driving them to the limits. So. It's always, it's never the same two years running. You just never know what you're going to get. John Corby has a cunning plan. He's determined to get the boom back in one piece. He can't let his captain down. We're going to make a sleeve, which will probably stretch to about there that wraps around the whole boom. And one way of making the sleeve could be, and he might not make it like this, but it is a possible way, is to make a sleeve on, on an unbroken piece of boom. You cover this with something brown parcel tape, mold release or anything, you can actually make mold a sleeve over here, which you then pick off and glue onto that piece. We'll see. The moment of truth has arrived for Sabina. She'll be live any second. So, uh, Fred's spoken to you. Yes, he has. And uh, just give it your best shot. Okay. okay. I'll so you try can my stand best. up here with me. Good evening. Gale force winds have caused havoc at Cow's Week today. Okay, Fred, could you just do a little bit of introductory as yes. you've done before? Yes. Well, I'm joined now by Sabina uh, mollart Rogerson, one of the press officers. Tell us first of all about the boat that was sunk. Oh, it's a lovely boat, actually. It's nice and silky design. Um, we're hoping to actually rescue it and hoik it up. Uh, the tides are really good, so if things go to plan, we can actually save her and do the repair work. All the people sailing today wanted to carry on sailing. There was no need to stop the racing. Uh, wind conditions were ideal. We had five to six. Uh, force winds, nothing over 30 knots, so ideal sailing conditions really. Uh, just three or four boats ran aground on the brambles, but then that happens on the weekends as well, so thankfully nothing too serious. Sabina, I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. Well, lots more to come for you uh, from Cowes this evening. A lot of drama, a lot of colour as well. But in the meantime, back to the studio and back to you, Jane. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. 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 Sabina. Okay, thank you.
Well, you've got until 9.30 in the morning to speak. <coughs> OK. If it is impossible to do it by 9.30, tell us, and we won't race tomorrow. We get too discussed, but we really don't want that to happen. If there's anything worse than working into the night, it's working into the night when there's a party next door. But sailmaker Chris Ratsey's got used to it over the years. I think the worst condition we've ever had was on a Friday night, a uh, firework night at Cowsweek. We were all leaving, and at half past eight, a gentleman walked in with a damaged ex boat spinnaker. He's been in the tent since half past four. <laughs> so he did get a little bit of, um, shall we say, uh, banter about what he could do with his spinnaker. If he cared to bring it in the following morning, we were doing it, and we were all going to watch the fireworks. The next morning, the weather's improved, the crews are building themselves up for the day, and soon, they'll all want their sails back. The loft workers have done well. Just before midnight, I think, we got out in the end. So uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it was about, I don't know, nearly 50 here, I suppose. I mean, it's no piece of the wiki because you've got to get up this morning so they can all have Yeah, that's the snag, isn't it? Yeah. I used to go sailing as well. I had sort of like a 26-hour day, which was a bit odd in only 24. But uh, I think old age crept up on me. And uh, once you've done it so many years, you then have to take a breather. So uh, it's not the same every night, luckily. We get two or three bad nights, and then the rest is a bit of a holdy. So that's the way it goes. Right, next. Run away. Run away. Um, right. G3 had a major blow up, didn't it? Yeah. Um, and the main saw right. 229 pounds per cane on the brain. All of the sails are patched up in time, but what about that boom? <coughs> we, you don't know, we finished it about half two, and it's. Um, I mean, it's been in the oven since about since about three o'clock. So it's had five hours at 55 procs, and it was 10 percent fast. And it got a bit of wrinkle in the bottom of it, but we have to give you. Yeah, that was like the smell of laminate in one go, don't you? So I think it will just go straight on the back. You're a genius. Cheers. <laughs> so come on, off you go. Ten to right, ten let's ten take it away. Ten to nine. Independent Bear is back in business. On next week's program, the crew face more problems, but a celebrity sailor keeps their spirits high. Oh, they're firing at us, Captain. Bring it about. And as the racing draws to a close, John Banks prepares to face his final farewell. You know, I've said all along that I'm looking forward to retirement, but uh, yeah, I'm going to feel a bit sad when I walk off the boat tonight, I think. We'll be back in Cowes at the same time, half past five, next Sunday. In half an hour, we've more of your home video howl howlers on uh, You've Been Framed. <laughs>